Welcome to Leadlist. Our client has requested that we make a lead storing application so that they can access their leads quickly and easily. The application consists of two major components, the lead form control component and the lead component. By the end of this lecture, we will have implemented NGRX store. We will have tested and created a new reducer function and we'll have hooked up all of the functionality on screen, writing very little code. So let's first make a reducer so that we can test the addition of items from our lead list. Let's make a new folder named reducers and inside of our reducers folder, we'll make a lead.reducer.ts. Our reducer is expecting some actions. So let's define the actions that we can expect within our application. We can expect to add a lead and remove a lead. We can then export a function from our reducer named lead reducer, and this can expect to take a state and our state will be a type lead array. So let's import our lead model. Our lead model contains everything we saw on the form and an ID. We can set the initial state to simply be an empty array. And whenever we're changing our state via the reducer, we'll also need to pass in an action. We'll need to import action from ngrx slash store. And whenever we pass an action to our reducer, our reducer will switch on the action. It will say, what action am I expecting? And we have the following two actions, such as add lead and remove lead. So let's switch on the action.type. In the case that the action is add lead, let's return the current state concatenated with the payload. The payload in this circumstance is the lead that we add from our form. In the case that it is remove lead, we'll want to return a new version of the state filtered for wherever the lead.id does not match the action.payload.id. In the event that we don't pass an action type at all, we can use default. And in that circumstance, we can return the state. Now that we have a basic reducer that can either add or remove leads, let's write a test to ensure that the add function works as expected. Make a new file named lead.reducer.spec.ts. Adding the .spec.ts ensures that Karma picks this up as a test file. We can start off by describing what it is that we're going to test. So the describe function is essentially the overarching scope for example, our lead reducer. So let's add the description, lead reducer. Inside of our describe function, we will give it some spec definitions. And the definitions at this point will simply be, it should add a lead to the list. I'm using the word list interchangeably with state at this point. And within our spec, we can add an assertion function. The first thing that we'll do inside of our assertion function is set up some initial state. We can say const initial state should be of type lead array and simply equal to an empty array because this matches our reducer. As you can see, our state is initialized as an empty array. We will have to import our lead and then we need to define a lead action. And that lead action will have a type of add lead. When our reducer sees this add lead type, it will return a new state with the addition of that payload. We can add a payload and some test data to pass along to our state. All we need to do now is dispatch this action to our reducer and compare the length of both the initial state and the changed state. So to capture that action, we'll say the changed state should be of type lead array and equal to our lead reducer, which we'll have to import. And this expects a state. So the initial state will be passed and the action will be the lead action. Our assertion at this point would be that the initial state dot length 
so the length of the initial state array is zero, should be less than our changed state dot length. So this is the length of the array after we've added our action. If we run our tests by saying ng test, this will use the karma test runner to run the reducer spec that we've just created. We can see that it was executed and the assertion of our test was indeed successful. If we were to instead change this to say that the initial state should be greater than the changed state, we should find that our test does now fail. And this is because it expects zero to be greater than one. Now that our assertion is correct and our reducer works as we expect, we can add this functionality to our component. Inside of our root module, we can then provide this store throughout our application by using the store module. And from within here, we have a provide store method. This takes a reducer and a potential initial state. For now, we're just going to add the reducer that we created earlier. So ensure we import that and remove the initial state. To add the ability to add a lead to the form, all we need to do is dispatch the event that we locked out inside of our test. This is now as simple as writing a function named add lead. To push an action to the store, we'd have to get an instance of that store. This requires us injecting store and also creating an interface named app state. From within the interface, we can export the lead array and if we wrote any other reducers inside of our application, this is where we'd add them. We can then dispatch the same action as our lead reducer spec, but this time the input is reflected inside of our ng model and we have the ID inside of the class. We can then add the add lead click event to our button. And finally, because our state is an observable, we now just need to subscribe to that event. We can capture this by injecting our state into our root component and then subscribing to our leads from within the store. If we then add a lead from within our browser, our application is updated via our state. 